Welcome to the Blue Coat SSL Visibility Appliance First Steps. This video tutorial describes the deployment scenario of the SSL V appliance configured for proxy on a stick interoperability. This is not the ability to offload SSL traffic from the proxy. That feature is planned for a future SSL Visibility Appliance release. In this setup, if the proxy requires to see inside SSL traffic, it will need to perform its own decryption, where traffic that passes through the appliance goes to a proxy or any device that terminates a flow and initiates a new flow on its behalf, and the traffic returns to the SSLV appliance on the way to its destination. Support for this traffic pattern has been improved with a cache lookup change and a Layer 3, Layer 4 rule implemented in Release 3.8.5 and above. In some cases, earlier releases could have caused problems with this traffic pattern. We will perform the following activities to complete the configuration. First, we will highlight the functional changes to the SSL Visibility Appliance software. Then, take a look at the installation topology for the appliance that presents the traffic pattern scenario. We will then create the rule set and policy, create a segment and apply the policy to the segment. This configuration can be applied to any of the supported deployment scenarios, whether the traffic you are interested in is inbound or outbound, if the attached security device that receives the decrypted SSL traffic is active or passive, even if the failure mode is fail to appliance or fail to network. If SSL traffic traverses the SSL visibility appliance more than once, a Layer 3, Layer 4 rule can be applied at the client hello message. Previously, a rule action could only take effect after the SSL certificate handshake was completed between the server and the SSL visibility appliance. Now, rule sets will allow Layer 3, Layer 4 rules to be applied at the client hello message. These rules applied at the client hello must use Layer 3, Layer 4 match fields exclusively and occur before any non-Layer 3, Layer 4 rules in the rule set. The valid fields are source IP address or a list of addresses, destination IP address or a list of addresses, the destination port, and traffic class. For these rules, the action must be one of the following, drop, cut through, or reject. Again, it is important to note that all Layer 3, Layer 4 rules that you want to be applied to the client hello must occur before any non-Layer 3, Layer 4 rules in the rule set. Also, once the policy reaches a rule that includes non-Layer 3, Layer 4 match fields, all the subsequent rules will be applied at the server hello, server client level. Layer 3, Layer 4 rules were added to the SSL visibility appliance in order to handle issues with proxy on a stick deployments as shown in this diagram. In this scenario there are two separate SSL sessions established, one from the client to the proxy and the other from the proxy to the server. Both of these flows traverse the network link where the SSL visibility appliance is a bump in the wire. Note that these two flows cannot have identical packet headers as the SSL visibility appliance does not support having the same flow cross the bump in the wire more than once. In reality, packet headers will be different as the proxy terminates and re-originates the TCP connection that is carrying the SSL flow. Therefore, the headers will always be different. With two SSL flows passing through the SSL visibility appliance, we can choose to inspect either one of the flows, the client to the proxy flow or the proxy to the server flow. Trying to inspect both flows could cause issues and is not needed because they carry the same data. Using a cut-through rule will cause one of the SSL flows not to be inspected, allowing us to choose which flow is inspected and which is not. Prior to the introduction of the Layer 3, Layer 4 rules, you could use a cut-through rule to select which flow was not inspected 
but this rule would only be evaluated once the SSL visibility appliance had processed the full SSL handshake after it received the complete server certificate from the server. This meant that the SSL visibility appliance needed to actively intervene in the SSL handshake for the flow before it could make a cut-through decision. With Layer 3, Layer 4 rules, the SSL visibility appliance can now make the decision to cut through the flow as soon as it receives the SSL client hello from the client, meaning as soon as it can determine that it is an SSL flow. Making the cut-through decision at this point avoids the need for the SSL visibility appliance to actively intervene in the SSL handshake for the flow and reduces the processing required. Layer 3, Layer 4 rules can only match on information that is present in the TCP packet header as this is the only data available when the client hello is received. At the SSL Visibility Appliance Web User Interface, we will create the configuration. Rules are used to match against a specific SSL flow or set of flows. We will create three rules. First, the Layer 3, Layer 4 cut-through rule for any traffic destined to the IP address of the proxy. This will cut through, or ignore, all the SSL flows between the clients and the proxy. The second rule will inspect the traffic using Certificate Resign. This is for any traffic with the source IP address that is from the proxy. So it will inspect any sessions originating at the proxy using a Certificate Resign. The third rule will be a cut through rule that matches on any flow. This rule will prevent any flows that are not processed by either Rule 1 or Rule 2 from being inspected and simply pass the traffic on. Although these rules can be added to your existing rule set, to keep this example simple and clean, we will begin by creating a new rule set. Under the Policy tab, select Rule Sets. You may add, remove, or clone rule sets. Click the plus icon and add a rule set. In the window, enter a name for the rule set, then click OK. In the Rules panel, click the plus icon to insert a new rule. This is the Layer 3, Layer 4 rule for traffic going to the proxy from your clients. In order to enforce this, the traffic action must be either drop, cut through, or reject. We will set it to cut through. Enter a comment to understand the function of this rule, and then set the traffic identifier to source IP address, destination IP address, destination port, or traffic class. With the proxy in explicit mode, we can use the destination IP address of the proxy. So any traffic to the proxy will match this rule. If the proxy were in transparent mode, the rule would use the source IP, enter the address, then click OK. Apply the changes. Next, we will add a rule to decrypt traffic we want to send to the security device at the top of the diagram for analysis. So we add this rule with an action to decrypt, resign, certificate, add a description. Because this traffic is all coming from the proxy, we will use its IP address as the source, then click OK and apply the rule. There is a default catch-all action in the rule set options to cut through any traffic that does not match any created rules. However, you may want more granular control. So we create a third rule for general traffic passing through the SSL visibility appliance that does not match Rule 1 or Rule 2. So we set this action to cut through and add a comment to describe the rule and use all trusted certificates to match on this traffic. Then click OK and apply this rule. The Layer 3, Layer 4 rule must be placed before any non-Layer 3, Layer 4 rules in the rule set to create the flow cache entry on the client hello message. If the rule is placed below another rule, once a policy matches a rule, it will apply the match at the server hello server certificate level. Therefore, we must ensure the Layer 3, Layer 4 rule is first the decrypt rule for the traffic we are interested in inspecting which will complete the entire handshake prior to enforcing the rule, is next. And finally, a rule 
for the traffic that does not match any prior rules. This is not the ability to offload SSL traffic from the proxy. A segment is a group of interfaces that receive traffic. It enforces the rule set use and determines the deployment mode. The segment distributes the traffic according to the policy within the rule set in copy mode. To create a segment, go to the Policies tab and select Segments. The display contains a graphical display of the system. In the Segments pane, click the plus icon to add. In the new window, select Edit, then the mode the appliance will use according to the supported options listed. We are using Active Inline, as seen on the top right. Select the rule set we just created, set the session log mode appropriately, and enter a description in the comments box as desired, then click OK. The new segment will appear. Apply the policy changes. To activate the new segment, in the Segments panel, select the segment, click the Mark for Activation icon. In the Activation window, set the ports as described and highlighted in pink. One side of the network, and then the other. Click Next. At this point, you may add optional copy ports for secondary passive devices to receive a copy of the inspected traffic. Click Next. To make this change take effect, apply the policy changes. When complete, the active segment should have a green background. Verify the active ports. Back at the rule sets, please remember that the order of the rules within the active rule set will determine how the flow is classified. If the Layer 3, Layer 4 rule is after the SSL certificate rule, in some cases the traffic could be inspected twice and the flows will break. So we want this rule prior to the non-Layer 3, Layer 4 rule. Visit the Bluecoat SSLV First Steps web guide available at BlueTouch Online to learn more about the most effective ways of deploying and using the SSLV appliance to secure your network. For suggestions or comments about this video tutorial, contact us at training.books at bluecode.com.